Good morning, or I guess morning. I don't know. Where are you? Are you in uh, Michigan or Hawaii right now? Uh, I left Hawaii. I'm in Wisconsin now. I'm in Wisconsin. I knew it was one of those. One of those. Up there. I, I just fried up a venison tenderloin from shot it right there. Oh well, nice. Yeah, that's that's. I appreciate that. When did you leave Hawaii? When? Yeah. Um, about a week and a half ago. Okay, so wasn't any trouble with the travel or any of that stuff? Or... Uh, there was only about 10 of us on the plane. So you were able to social distance, I assume. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you know, even I think that they average maybe uh, 30 people in the Maui port every day. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like being locked down in Hawaii would not be that, that bad of a deal. I really wanted to stay. I really did. And Craig wanted to come home, and he ultimately made the decision. And you guys were on Maui, or which island were you on? Yeah, we have a place in Maui, yeah. Oh, yeah, because I think Kauai's one is overrun with chickens, so I don't know if you can eat those chickens or if they're any good, but I know there's plenty of those guys running around. Yeah, there's more roosters than there are people. And then one of the islands has the axis deer. Is it, is it Molokai, or which one's got all the axis deer running around? That are... uh, Lanai? Lanai, okay. Yeah, I guess it... But you can go hunt in Maui, but I just haven't gotten to that point yet. Gotcha. Well, I'll tell you what, Maria, I think many of the folks in here probably are aware of your work. Uh, maybe you cooked up some of your recipes and stuff, but for those that have not heard of you, can you just give us a little quick uh, two minute bio maybe or something like that? Oh, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I guess um, when I was 16 years old, I was twice my size, really unhealthy, and I went to the doctor and they gave me three different prescription medications, one for acid reflux, uh, I had PCOS, um, they gave me antidepressant, a lot of different things, but I didn't wanna take them. And that very same week, I took my dog to the vet because she was losing patches of her hair. And the first question the vet asked was, what are you feeding her? And so uh, automatically I was like, wow, the doctor never asked me that. Maybe there's really something to this food thing and at the time I worked at a coffee shop where I made the muffins and the scones and all of that and whatever didn't sell went home with me that day. So I was living off of pretty bad food and yeah, I, I changed my life 20, 23 years ago now. And uh, it, I would never look back. I'm just trying to imagine you twice the size that you are because you still wouldn't be very big even at twice the size. <laughs> well, I am very short. So it was kind of like I was more round than I was, you know, tall. Yeah, I've, I've, I've interviewed, actually it's kind of funny, I've interviewed Craig a couple times, you know, your husband, but I know that you're equally part of that team. And uh, so I'm excited to do this. So a lot of people know you for, uh, you know, some of the cooking books and, and stuff like that and as, as, a, as a kind of an expert cooking person. We just had Pete Evans on, uh, was it on uh, Friday? So we have, we've had a couple different, you know, people that know how to know their way around a kitchen anyway. Yeah. Um, but besides that, you are doing some of your, you've kind of adopted a more carnivorous approach. And I know you do that from time to time or maybe fully, I'm not sure. And you do source your own meat or, or, or do, you're, you're, you're somebody that hunts and, you know, you know, when you have the sort of stereotypical hunter, you know, and I hate to do that, but I mean, you wouldn't pick you as a, as someone that's out there bow hunting, but I mean, it's, you know, anybody can potentially do it. So talk a little bit about uh, your current diet and how you procure your food and that type of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I started bow hunting when I was 12 and it was a way to spend time with my dad. Um, he owns, and he still does a plumbing and heating business. And so he was always busy. Like even Christmas day, I remember him having to leave to go help someone that their heat went out or whatever. And um, so I started bow hunting just because I wanted to spend time with him. And um, my love for bow hunting passed on to Craig. And so he started bow hunting with me, but that's why we started the carnivore lifestyle because he got Lyme disease. And when you're in the woods a lot, I mean, I'll, I'll pick t 16 ticks off me. And I kind of would jokingly, I remember posting it on social media a long time ago. Oh my gosh, here's another tick embedded. I was pulling it off and they're like, take that seriously. And I feel bad for not understanding Lyme disease and almost um, undermining it thinking like, what's this Lyme disease? And it went, it took Craig, like he became a different person. Uh, we didn't know what it was. Um, but looking into what helps with Lyme disease and his autoimmune, you know, his immune function was like really low. Um, we just started 
eating that way. I, honestly, if you look at my books though, I was only having like five vegetables in the book. So when people are like, so you're carnivore now, it's like, well, there was only five in my original books. It wasn't that we, we don't really like vegetables. And that was another reason um, we don't. And my kids don't. And what happened was we were at my parents' house for Christmas and my mom was, she's a wonderful person, um, but she's a nag. And she's like, your kids don't eat vegetables and you know, all of this. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. She might make me feel guilty as a mom that they didn't like vegetables. And I didn't make them eat them. So Craig started doing all these charts just for us and to show her where the nutrients are and that they are not in vegetables and all these anti-nutrients that are in vegetables and where my kids would just eat beef and they love it. And he showed them, my parents, where all the nutrients are. And that's where we were like, hey, we don't need to do this anymore. And um, 10 years ago, we stopped having a garden because it was more for fun. And so, you know, we stopped doing all that. Um, but just finding, I guess I'm always on the pursuit of what's going to fuel my cells better and realizing that, hey, I don't need a side with that meat. It's good just itself. I don't need to feel like I need to add vegetables because they were the healthy part. And I, you know, I mistakenly believed that for a long time. Yeah, I think a lot of us are in that, you know, and, and a lot of us are probably upsetting our mothers and grandmothers and stuff like that by shooting vegetables. And I, I don't like them. I never liked them. People ask me, do I miss them? I say, hell no. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things I'm missing. It's not vegetables. I'll tell you that. Hey, what were those five vegetables just out of curiosity? Just, uh, just They're real know. watery ones, you know, like iceberg lettuce, things that are, you know, I tried, I, I didn't know what oxalates were at the time, but I picked the ones that like there was no cauliflower, there was no broccoli, like all of these so-called keto vegetables, just because I knew that fiber was still the carbohydrate that you need to consider. A lot of these, uh, I don't know if you want to call them keto experts, um, that we know very well, they believe that you can subtract fiber and that that doesn't matter. Well, I work with a lot of type one diabetics and guess what? You can't subtract the fiber. It does count as a carbohydrate. Um, and it is a menace to our stomach. And so it was uh, more like, uh, you know, uh, there was cabbage in there, there was zucchini, it was uh, iceberg lettuce, um, onions and garlic. So it was like really um, minimal, but that was how we ate. And those are the only things that we really would eat um, once in a while. Do you know, um, I'm just wondering, well, I mean, I guess a lot of people in the keto space, you know, avocado, I mean, you, you, you consider that a fruit, I guess, then, is that right? It's a fruit, but uh, yeah. think about avocado. So what is the, I know that you're not always about weight loss, okay, but I swear 99% of people that consult with me, they're concerned about weight loss in some way, whether it be 10 pounds, 20, 200 pounds, okay? What is a great way to put on weight? Eat carbohydrates with fat. And what is avocado? It's a carbohydrate with a fat. People want to think that you can subtract the fiber from an avocado, but if you do the real math, it has as much carbohydrates as a small banana does. Um, and so when you pair those two together, yeah, you eat an avocado. It's a great idea. No, it is not. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was on a, on a ketogenic diet, I, I tried to learn to like avocados, and I because I had, instinctively, I'd had, for weird, whatever weird reason, I never liked guacamole, and I just uh, I thought it was gross, looked like baby excrement yeah, and food, right yeah and so when i ate but then i tried to eat it and i tried to just force myself and you put olive oil on there and balsamic vinegar and salt and pepper and choke it down and i never really could say i really enjoyed it i mean i didn't mind it as much um it's like certain vegetables i didn't mind if you slathered them in bacon fat or wrapped them in bacon like brussels sprouts and you know or put them in with little pieces of uh you know uh different different types of pork um, but yeah, I never, I never was a vegetable person, even when I was a kid. It was kind of funny. My dad used to make me eat them when I was a kid and he's now carnivore now. And I asked him about that. Yes. And I said, Hey dad, why did you make me eat vegetables? And he goes, well, I never liked them either, but you know, it's just the way it was. And I remember him telling me to eat my onions in the meatloaf. And I said, I don't like onions. And then he said, you can't even taste them. And I said, well, then why'd you put them in there if you can't taste them? You know, that, did, that, that didn't provide any response. But no, I, I do see it for flavoring enhancement. You know, I mean, this is a thing. We have some people in here that are 
you know, very reactive to, to certain compounds and others aren't as quite reactive. And so I, I do see That's that. how Craig and I are. Like I can get away with having seasonings like onion and garlic. Yeah. But for him, you know, with the Lyme disease and everything that he, he can feel it pain wise. Yeah. He will feel the next day be very stiff and people kind of laugh at this Lyme disease stuff, but I mean, it's, it's real. I mean, I can, you can even see like his knee will blow up almost twice the size. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty interesting. And, you know, like I said, some people would discount that. That is just kind of craziness. And I, and I used to do that as a physician years ago. I'd see people come and they'd say, you know, if I ate bread, my knees would hurt. And I was like, yeah, whatever, lady. You know, but yeah, yeah. this is years ago when I didn't have a clue, you know, and now I'm kind of like, yeah, I was wrong all those times. And now we... Uh, but not um, yeah. just power, you know, and look what you're doing now, you know. Yeah, no, and, and it's it's interesting. There's a lot of other, I'm pretty proud of the fact there's a lot of other orthopedic surgeons out there that contact me that are saying, yeah, I'm seeing the same thing in my patients. You know, Gary Fetke famously is another one, and there's there's a whole bunch. We had my old, my ex-partner, a guy named Jake Oldham, Dr. Oldham, who I used to train, I used to work with, and he and his wife are doing it now. And so there's lots of, uh, lots of people seeing that with the joint pain and stuff like that. But um so tell me what um, what is the latest with you guys? You guys, I know you did a really nice carnivore cookbook, you and Craig, and he wrote some of the scientific stuff. I assume you provided. Do you do all the recipes, or does Craig have any? Does he have any culinary skills, or is it all you? It's all me. Uh, it is. I mean, he's really great at the science. He really is. But um, and he couldn't cook when I'm gone. You know, he's fine at it. But I I don't know where these ideas come from. I guess. Uh, you know, I, I was a cook at restaurants when I was younger. So it's just all of these things like, hey, you know, um, scallopini or whatever it is, I could make that, you know, so I just like, like ravioli, I made a carnivore ravioli where I use prosciutto, you know, like, it's just um, fun type stuff that my kids kind of laugh at me sometimes, but they'll be like, yeah, let's try that, you know, like, what's an Oreo, they don't know what it is. So I was like, hey, I, we could, we could try to make that. And so we make it fun. And you know, sometimes people are like, so maybe a little bit judgy about my old books, but I think that they're still very prevalent because um, if you would have told me at that young age of 16 that you were going to eat nothing but meat right now, I would have cried and not even tried, right? But for me, it was just slowly baby steps. And then I was like, yeah, I don't really want the almond flour anymore, taking that out of my diet. And um, I didn't feel very good on it. You, you start to feel really amazing and you want that feeling to stay. And what do I feel really good on? I feel really good on like venison tenderloin. I just had it, you know? So I think people get addicted to that really good feeling and they don't, they don't want to feel yucky anymore. But um, what are we working on now? I guess, um, you know, Today, my kids and I are gonna throw the camera on. I, I'm actually a pretty big introvert, but we're gonna start doing some YouTube cooking videos because guess what? Nobody wants to read. They want videos. And so we're gonna make um, you know, a couple things today, some of our favorite recipes. And we're gonna start doing that, you know, our YouTube channel and growing that and stuff. And my kids are really funny, so they'll do a video once in a while. So that's what we're kind of working on now. How many, uh, you know, because all, for all the recipes you get out there and you put out, you, you know, you put out for public, how many times do you try and it doesn't work? <laughs> I guess like this is a disaster. Or oh, my gosh. Didn't... You know, um, there was a couple recipes where it, one of them in particular, it's, you know, uh, Dr. Einfeld, the diet doctor, right? It's now called the diet doctor bread. Well, guess what? It's my recipe. He just put it on his site. Um, that recipe was a thorn in my side. It turned out perfectly the first time, but I was, you know, new in this recipe writing air, like idea and I didn't write anything down and I made it again and again and again. And I obviously was forgetting something because it wasn't working. Um, I think it took a year and a half and probably thousands of dollars of almond flour and all of this. And once I got it perfected, we weren't eating that type of stuff anymore. So but now everybody, it's like the perfect bread substitute for those who, you know, miss that fluffy yeasty type bread. Is there, I mean, is there a carnivore equivalent of that? That you, that, that, that's a bread. I know I just started experimenting with these things called chaffles, which uh, oh, yeah. I just made for my kids for breakfast. I don't, some I can eat, some I don't, you know, I'll eat the savory one. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the one I made, I made one this morning with, with uh, cinnamon and I threw some banana in there for, for the little kiddo and, 
uh, he loved it, but uh, that's, that's not on my menu right now. But do you do you have a bread that that works well with uh, with carnivore? Yeah, if you you know, it's a, the protein bread on MariaMindBodyHealth.com. It's where you whip the whites, and that's the that's the part people try it once and they're like, oh, this is awful. Well, if you don't whip the whites so much that you could tip the bowl upside down and it won't move. Um, if you do that right, then you're golden and you don't want any water to touch the whites or that'll fall too. But um, that's the one. If you search protein bread, you'll find that one. So that's, that's kind of like a meringue almost at some point. It is. Yeah. Um, and, you, you know, I add an egg white protein powder in there because it's a stabilizer, but it's just pure egg whites. There's nothing else in the ingredients. Um, sometimes the oopsie rolls, people like that. Um, I don't know who wrote that recipe, but that's kind of a version of that. Um, but yeah, there's a couple different like breads, if you like. You know, I know a lot of people talk about that. They use like pork rinds and yeah. some of these other things to, to sort of round out those. I things. did a corn dog the other day. It was actually on Easter, a corn dog with using pork rinds on the outside with eggs and stuff. It worked pretty good. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing kind of a one meal a day stint for for most days right now. And then you do that all the time? Not all the time because I think you adapt to that too much. So I I, I don't think doing chronic, you know, calorie restriction or chronic fasting is is. Uh, I don't either. That's why I asked yeah. you. Yeah. So I think I think putting it in periodically. I mean, and right now, like I said, I I, I put this in the in, caveat this in the fact that I'm actively trying to lose weight and uh, get leaner for, for a CrossFit competition. And so that is just a, a sort of a temporary strategy that I'm using just because it works. And, uh, but hopefully once I get to my sort of stable weight, I can, you know, just eat <laughs> in a more normal fashion, which I like to, but uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 I don't mind. I, I, I enjoy my food when I eat, I, I eat a lot. I still eat a lot every day. I mean, a lot of food. That's the hard, like I never got into the OMAD that much for a little bit, but I had a hard time getting enough protein in in one sitting without feeling pretty ill. Yeah, I can, I can put down three, three, 400 grams of protein in one sitting, no problem. So, oh. I mean, that's, that's me, but I'm a big guy. Well, you, you <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm, I'm relatively, you know, good size and then I train a lot. Yeah. Um, so let me, uh, oh, I wanted to ask you about, um, Oh, there was something I wanted to ask, and I'm just blanking on it now. Oh, 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 yeah, the social media stuff. So I notice I, I hear periodically that both you and Craig saying that, hey, I can't access my own website. I've been blocked from Facebook groups and all this stuff. So what's going on with that stuff? Well, we've never been blocked from our the MariaMindBodyHealth.com. We've never been blocked from that, but um, definitely been blocked from Facebook um, ever since the Carnivore book came out. Um, uh instagram sometimes people will tell me they can't comment on my if i do the hashtag carnivore or something like that um i have a carnivore recipes um instagram page and that's where people mostly can't they say i'm trying to comment on your stuff and i can't um gosh there was a couple other things that happened it was obviously um i think we really upset some vegans and um you know, if they mark your stuff as spam, then, you know, that's why we were like, we were always talking about you. It was like, why isn't Sean getting blocked? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I suspect, well, I have, I, you know, I've been blocked out of Twitter a couple of times. I've oh, been, have you? I've been uh, I suspect some of my, you know, the quote unquote shadow manning. I suspect that's going on to some degree. Some people, I've had a lot of people say they, that they, they get unsubscribed to my YouTube channel mysteriously yeah. or they can't access stuff. So, I think it does happen to some degree, whether it's just algorithm generated or if it's mass reporting by vegans, which obviously I think they do that too. Um, and then you have to wait for, uh, you know, a manual review, which can take some time. And uh, right. so it, it is happening. To me. I, I guess what's interesting to me is that we don't, I mean, I'm not even on any vegan websites. I don't really care. I, you know, I could, I could care less, but they seem to really attach to us in a really angry way and it's like just you know do your thing and we're going to do our thing and like just i don't know i just don't know why that anger has to be there and the hatred well i mean you know i guess they view us as some of them some of them you know think we're murdering animals and uh, <laughs> raping animals and we're denying them their freedom and uh 
uh, you know, so they're very passionate about it. And, you know, obviously many of them are misguided and a lot of them are, tend to be younger, 16 yeah. year old kids behind a keyboard. A lot of times I think is what you run into. So, um, yeah. I don't know. There's nothing more humane than, I mean, the kid, my kids will sit with me when I bow hunt. And if you want to be, a, get the cool mom sticker, you should uh, gut the deer out in front of them, but they know how much we honor that. We use every piece of the animal, the animal, was loved and you know like we we cherish it i don't know people just they get removed from their food i believe in a lot of ways yeah what percentage of your food do you do you end up acquiring from hunting would you say your, your meat is it pretty much um, all of it or some of it or in the fall uh almost all of it but now like i was lucky to find venison in the freezer we're just kind of digging through the freezer right now um but in the fall a lot of it because it's not just me um, or Craig, it's my parents, my brothers, everybody hunts and uh, we share, you know, so if you need something, you're given it. And that's what's really beautiful about it. When someone's in need, we, you know, we donate it or give it to them. Um, and uh, I, I also fish a lot. Uh, we usually go down and fish in the summer all the time. Um, right now, the ice is just getting off. Um, so it's not safe to ice fish or summer fish really. So we're waiting for that time to happen. My kids don't really like fish. Um, so yeah, they're more of about, they, they love beef. So I guess Craig and I are the more of the venison people. How, much, how long does a, you know, how long does a deer last your family? I mean, how much meat's on a deer carcass typically? I'm, I'm guessing it's probably about 80 pounds, but I, I- Yeah, when it comes down to the meat part, it's probably 80 pounds, depending on the size of the deer. Um, the smaller deer tastes better. I don't mean to get gross with that, but you know, those big bucks, you're not shooting that because you want the taste of that, you know, deer and rut, it's not good. But um, yeah, um, one deer, maybe a month. I mean, you know, because we're doing other things like eggs and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. Um, what is uh, what is your favorite way to, to, you know, season that type of stuff? Because some people, oh. you know, that's one of the things that I found, you know, like some people will complain about the taste of grass finished something, something. They don't like the gaminess. I find that, you know, in those when I season them up with something, it, then it's completely, right. totally fine for me. I don't know. And it depends on where the wildness comes from. Like we have a lot of oak trees here, so they taste different than what I grew up eating. They, they totally taste different. Just like, you know, pigs that are fed different things and stuff like that. Um, what I did earlier today, the tenderloin is like super soft and it's usually like this size and I'll slice it real thin into medallions. And then I just season it with, you know, salt and I heat butter up in a pan and you just like once that pan is piping hot you just sear it maybe 30 seconds on each side because they're so thin and like dinner's ready real quick then which i really like <laughs> yeah i think that's i know we pete, pete evans was talking about the one of the best meals he ever had cooked he had had a, like a michelin three-star chef prepare him uh it was i think he said no it was lamb but it was uh it was like three ingredients. It was like water, garlic, and, and the whole the whole entire animal. And it was just like the best food. But the best ingredients, you know, like people, um, someone did a, one of my recipes on Instagram and they're like, oh, if you don't have ginger, you could use, use powdered ginger. I'm like, no, you know, that's not going to taste the same. If you use real ginger, it's totally different than if you use like powdered ginger. I don't know. It's just like ingredients do matter. Yeah, no, I think that that's definitely, definitely true. Um, what, uh, how often do you guys, are you guys eating twice a day or what's your, what's your meal frequency like? Yeah, usually twice a day. Um, and even my kids, like I don't limit snacks or anything like that, but I have one that just, he doesn't care for breakfast and I didn't want to force it on him anymore. And so he has a lunch and a dinner and then maybe he'll have like some beef sticks or something later, but, um, it's just uh, we that long flight. I hear a dog barking. <laughs> um, that long flight to Hawaii um, or back from Hawaii. You know, my parents are like, "What are you gonna pack? Because you're not, not given any food on the planes anymore, except for junk." And I was like, "Don't worry about it, Mom. We're just fine." And uh, it's just interesting to see how these kids are constantly snacking, whether we're at the zoo or whatever. 
and they are like, no, we're fine, grandma, we don't need any snacks or I don't know. So yeah, usually two a day, uh, kids usually two and a snack if they need so something. I'm just wondering, because you obviously had, you know, obviously I would assume we're on a ketogenic style diet for, for quite a while and then switching over to carnivore. Did you, because I know I've heard Craig's story about the, the Lyme disease, but have you, did you notice any, any additional benefits from doing that? Yeah, um, my PCOS went away, um, all of the signs and symptoms of that. Um, my acid reflux went away. Um, depression, that's what helped me stay on it right away. Um, if you know anything about Wisconsin, sometimes they are, you know, they're really into their alcohol and their food and there's a lot of food pushers. Um, and uh, I never was tempted by those food pushers because um, that depression almost immediately lifted and I just didn't want to be sad anymore. Um, and I like the food. I, you know, I'm not going to eat chicken breast and broccoli. I don't like that. I, I really like the food. And um, so that's the thing, like you have to find what you really enjoy um, you know, if you don't like fish, don't eat fish, you know, like you don't force it down. I like salmon. I'm not going to eat it. Um, I think that's, that's the problem. People aren't falling in love with the food because they're just not willing to try it in different ways. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've sort of recently just as part of this leaning, I mean, a lot of, uh, quite a bit of fish right now. It's mostly just pan flour, pan seared flounder up in some, uh, some ghee and, uh, um, a little bit of seasoning and that just, I, I really enjoy that. And then I throw it, then I chase it down with a couple of steaks typically, but uh, <laughs> so I can, so I can feel like I've actually eaten, you know, it's kind of funny because I, the fish is kind of like the appetizer, you know, I don't really, I don't feel like I've eaten if I don't have some red meat in there. And I don't know if you feel the same way. I do that. actually in Hawaii, I ate mahi mahi every single day and my plate was mahi mahi and a filet mignon like every day. And I just, um, I, I love, that was my, so-called break your break your fast breakfast um yeah and i have that every single day and i really miss it now <laughs> i yeah, can't get good here yeah i guess well i mean i guess there's a different type obviously you got the ocean you know hawaii's obviously not having all the fresh fish but i guess i guess in the lakes and stuff in wisconsin once you know once, yeah once walleye, I mean, we have walleye and pan fish that we eat a lot but i mean if you freeze fish it tastes fishy i don't like it um where uh, there's a store a block away from our place in Maui and I rode my bike there um, every day they got fish delivered twice a day that's how fresh it is um, and I just I really miss it <laughs> and you guys have what two or three kiddos I can't remember I know I've seen some pictures a couple of them at least two of them Micah and Ty yep and how do they do with their diet are they liking the, are they eating a lot of meat and stuff like that or how do they how do those guys eat yeah, they, like I told you, they don't like vegetables, um, and I'm not a short order cook, so, like, they're eating meat, and they really like it, though. Um, when I am recipe testing and I make them try things, I remember, this was a couple years back, I was uh, testing a pancake, and I was like, here, Micah, eat a pancake, and he's like, <laughs> can I just have some eggs, please, because they just, I, I started them off on bone broth. They ate bone marrow when they um, were just babies. Bone marrow is like a perfect baby food. It's like pudding, you know? Um, and I swear that changed their palates. They don't yeah. know what's sweet. They, you know, sweet is not a thing, you know? Yeah, bone marrow is just delicious. I, sh I should eat it a lot more. I just, it's just something that, you know, obviously you got, there's a little bit, it's harder to ask, get. I guess it's not so convenient to get. Do you, I mean, can you get bone marrow from the deer you guys do? Or is that... Is that something you're able to do or no? You no, know, their bones are so much smaller than the cow bones that we get. I've yeah. never actually uh, broken that down. Um, but most of the time, if you go to a farmer, like here in Wisconsin, there's farmers doing grass-fed beef like every which way. We're way out in the country. And most people don't want the bones. They don't want the tongue. They don't want the heart. Um, we fed our dog ground up beef heart. That's what she ate. Um, and a lot of that stuff was really cheap, if not free, because nobody wants it. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking about it. You know, maybe a maybe a deer's femur or something like that. You know, you might it might be big enough to split open, but you got to have a special. I got to have a saw, the right kind of band saw. Oh, great right. love gadgets! I'll tell him he has to get one now. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it might be you might be able to get some a little bit extra. You know, I don't know what deer uh, deer marrow tastes like. I'm sure. 
Somebody does. I'm sure someone's eating it. I mean, they had to. So. I don't think it's too much different than beef, but like yeah. if you add bone marrow into scrambled eggs, it's like the creamiest scrambled eggs you'd ever get. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. That, that sounds really neat. Um, what other kind of just, can you give us some other carnivore sort of tips or tricks that most people may not be aware of that might, might work well? Um, I'm going to tell you something like, uh, one of my most famous like popular recipes. It's from my book, The 30 Day Ketogenic Cleanse. And it's not 100% carnivore, but it's great for kids that maybe don't want scrambled eggs for breakfast. Um, it's called chocolate pudding. Um, and it's made with hard boiled eggs. And this recipe I kept for a secret for many years because it was just so weird. But um, when we first adopted Micah and Kai, um, Craig lost his job. And um, we were like, crap, we just spent all this money adapting, you know, um, and my little boy didn't like eggs, my youngest one, the one that doesn't like breakfast to this day. I was like, man, what am I going to feed this kid? And eggs are the cheapest, you know, keto food. So I threw 10 hard boiled eggs into a blender. This is like, write this down because people love this. A can of coconut milk, but you can use heavy cream, raw milk, whatever you want. Um, I was trying to do dairy free for them. Um, and then you add like a little bit of vanilla, uh, like a couple tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. You can sweeten it with stevia, a pinch of cinnamon, you blend that up. You put it in the fridge overnight and it's like chocolate mousse. And if you don't tell anybody what's in it, they would never guess. So, but that's hard boiled eggs. It's interesting that they're hard boiled that you do that instead of just, you know. Well, it has to be hard boiled and then they, it turns into like a fluffy mousse. And don't use a hand mixer, you gotta use a, blender you know yes, someone so messed with me they're like i used a hand blender and it didn't work i'm like yeah that's not gonna work <laughs> so you do uh so you do like a vitamix or something like that you drop 10 hard-boiled eggs so it's 10 hard-boiled eggs you said a little bit of what was the other ingredients again and sorry. Coconut milk so if you don't if you don't use coconut milk use like two cups of heavy cream or um, raw milk something like that yeah. um two two to three tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, a pinch of cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla, and then like stevia to taste. Yes. Um, and I, you know, obviously people that are coming off of a sugary pudding, they'd want more, you know, sweetener in there. But um, once you get that taste out, like you don't need it so much. That's a little good. bit of salt too. Yeah, salt seems to be a, just a little salt in everything seems to make it better. Somebody's You're asking how- add it. What's that? Somebody's asking how much uh, cream would you use if you're not using a can of coconut milk? So. It's about two cups. Two cups of cream. Less. Okay, and that yeah, makes, so that, that's going to make a quite, a quite a big amount, I would imagine. It does, but I'm all about like easy things, you know? So we're, what's interesting, everybody's like, so how are you doing with this coronavirus? And it's like, honestly, life's kind of the same because we homeschool, we work from home, we live way out in the woods away from everybody. The food that we don't hunt, we get mailed to us, so I don't have to go to the store. Like, I don't know. Our life's not that much different, so. Uh, yeah, same here for me. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I, 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 because I'm now at the point where I kind of much do most of the stuff from, from home, a lot of stuff on Zoom and doing so many podcasts and stuff, and, uh, uh, you know, on, you know, some consulting in, in that. Uh, yeah. and, and so it's just cooking, eating, and, you know, doing a little exercise. And that's kind of uh, what I do, you know, regardless. So it's actually not too bad. But um, I, you know, certainly, uh, do you guys ever think you're going to go to Hawaii full time at some point? Or is that is that not an option? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, people laugh, like, why do you go back to Wisconsin? And I think if you've ever been to Wisconsin in the summertime, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Um, we are by two rivers right here that are just gorgeous and I love the woods and I love the privacy, you know, in Maui, you know, you're always seeing people and we're in a condo and here I go days without seeing people and it's kind of nice. It's just, it's nice to have two different worlds, but I do miss paddle boarding with the whales. I do miss swimming every day. So it's, it's, I don't know. It's about the both world, I guess. Yeah, I guess it makes you appreciate one or the other when you when you have that contrast. You know, it's kind of like you know you kind of get like whenever you, whenever you go on vacation, like back in the days when we used to be allowed to go on vacation, right? You you kind of after about a week or two, you're like, ah, oh, I miss home. Let me go home. Let me get home. Get back to my routine. So, 
Yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty neat. Do you do you find that uh, different regions in Hawaii versus because there's different. Obviously, I mean, there's a lot of people talk about, um, you know, ketogenic diets, high carb diets based on the region. You know, there's people like the tropical regions, maybe people do better on more carbohydrates and the people from the northern regions or southern regions do better on a lower carbohydrate. Do you find well, a difference? I really love their rice. The rice was the first thing to um, sell out or, you know, at the grocery stores when the whole Corona thing started. Rice was the first thing to go. Um, they love rice. They love sweet. They love pineapple, that type of stuff. I will say I was invited to a keto meetup in town in Kihei and I went to it and everybody was very, very nice. Um, and it's fairly maybe new to them, the keto lifestyle, but it's very like, I could find a lot of things at the store that were, you know, so-called keto friendly or whatever. I'm not talking like keto shakes and that type of crap, but um, even at restaurants, they would do, you know, like burgers wrapped in lettuce, which, you know, for a long time, that was kind of seen as weird. And if I go to Italy, they will not give me a burger patty without a bun. They're like, a hamburger is with bread. I'm like, just don't put the bread on it. And they just, they won't do it, you know? So, um, they're, they're open to uh, new things. And there's a great steakhouse we would go to called Duo. And uh, yeah, they would just, they knew what we liked and they knew we just wanted steak with some, you know, hollandaise sauce. And that uh, my little boy Kai, he's only nine and he'd take out one of the big ribeyes and the guys would always come over and pat him on the back. And, yeah. How, how uh, you know, cause this is a, uh, well, I mean, you're obviously not somebody that needs to lose weight at this point in your life, but um, because there is a little dichotomy within this carnivorous community. Some of us, myself included, tend to favor protein over fat, whereas other people tend to have the more ketogenic macros. Where do you fall on, on line with that? Or do you find it? You gotta come first. If you do, like we have a keto calculator on the website, it's free, Maria Mind Body Health. If you do the calculator, protein is a goal. You have to hit that goal. Fat is a maximum. And then carbohydrates is a maximum too. You can go under that, but fat, you don't want to go over protein. You can go over. Um, and I guess I remember, um, I wrote a book way before kids. This was one of my first books I wrote 15 years ago. And I talked about pure protein days where it was basically a carnivore lifestyle. It was a pure protein day. Um, and guess what? Some of these big people in the community that I befriended said, Oh no, Maria, that, too much protein turns into sugar and all of this. And I was like, oh, okay. And I started believing them. And Craig's like, no, 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 honey, let's look at the science. And so realizing that if you are type one or type two diabetic, your need for protein is higher. Um, and that's just like a big misconception that, um, you know, too much protein is bad for you. Yeah, it's definitely a controversial topic. I think for um, most people, they, well, maybe not in this community, but most people uh, eating standard American diet are eating far, far too little protein. Probably most people on a ketogenic diet are eating too little protein. Um, I do think, let's talk about the fat maximum because, you know, there's obviously there's very different opinions in here. And there's some people that um, feel that they can eat almost unlimited amounts of fat, which I disagree with. I think there is a point where you can oversaturate your system. I, I do think, you know, particularly with a meat-based diet, uh, I think you get this, you get, you do get an advantage. Protein is an advantageous macronutrient in the fact that it's very difficult to turn that into fat. The nutrients are. Um, but then, you know, you know, if you just eat, um, you know, you're pouring butter on top of everything and you're chugging heavy cream and you're, you know, you're doing this and you're trying to hit these, these ketogenic macronutrient ratios, you can potentially you know, get into issues with too much fat. So what is your fat maximum? What do you guys consider a maximum for fat? Well, I don't believe in percentages because that's going to cause you to fail. Right. So, um, I mean, it depends no on what your goals are, if you're an athlete or not. And it's all very dependent. But what I try to say, if you eat a ribeye, there's enough fat in the ribeye, you do not need to add extra. And if your body is already uh, filled with fat and you want to lose that, turn that fat dial down because then you will use that body fat to make ketones. And it's true. Higher ketones do not mean better results. My ketones are really low, but that's because I work out like a fiend. 
you know, like I work out in a fasted state. And so I'm using those ketones for my energy. Once I stop, it'll go up a little bit more, but this, I, I get really frustrated because people think that fat calories do not matter. It's like, what do they just shoot out your ass? Because they don't, um, you know, that's physics. It is, it's physics. I guess I understand that calories in calories out is, is a failed science, but the fact that you could eat 5,000 calories of fat and they don't matter. And so people say, if you are in fasting, if you're doing long-term fasting, just have some fat and you, you, that doesn't break your fast. It doesn't because fat increases insulin too. It does not as much as carbohydrates or protein, but it does. Um, if someone's in it for weight loss, um, I guess my, it, it depends on what their lean mass is, but like a female that's 120 pounds, I would say 80 grams of fat is maximum. Yeah, that, you know, I think that, uh, what I've, what I've found is, you know, again, as you, you like you, like you accurate, you get leaner and leaner and your, your energy requirements are high. It's just like, you know, carbohydrates for athletes. I mean, same thing with fat. I mean, it's just energy. And I know How many we're going to have fat in one pound of bacon. We're going to have uh, Ted name and, uh, coming on, uh, oh, good. I love him. And he's talks a lot about protein energy ratio. And I, and I, and I sort of largely agree with Ted on a lot of things. Um, understanding that, you know, there's other people out there like, uh, you know, the folks at paleo, uh, paleo medicina who really, really think that, uh, you know, maybe protein and still fall into this protein turning into glucose. I, when I look, when I read the literature, um, for particularly for healthy people, um, I don't think that's an issue at all. I think that, uh, um, I think, you know, diabetics can get into trouble with just too much fuel in general. Yes. And then, then they run into hepatic gluconeogenesis that becomes upregulated and right. diabetics do not their physiology does not respond the same as way as a non-diabetic does. Their, their glucose most likely will go down if they turn that fat dial down because they're just overfueling. Right. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I've, that's what I've, that's, that's what I found. I think that, you know, um, again, I think a low carb ketogenic carnivore approach gives you more wiggle room, you know, but there's still yeah. a ceiling. And once you, once you go past that, uh, you do, you run into trouble with, not losing body fat if that's your goal. You run into blood glucose issues if you're diabetic, and so I think you have to, you know, I mean, you have to basically drain the drain the uh, glycogen reserves, drain the fat fat reserves out of the out of the so-called ectopic fat. This would be visceral fat found in the liver, the pancreas, the myocytes, uh, where uh, sometimes that fat is a product of, you know, there's this concept of mitochondrial energy overload or mitochondrial overload, and where you see that as we take in more energy than we're utilizing, we get this incomplete beta oxidation and you get this accumulation of fats within these cells. And this is what the vegans talk about with the fat, with the fat but it's really energy overfueling. And, you can, and that fat usually comes through de novo lipogenesis from the liver, which is seeing too much calories or too much energy. Uh, it's then spitting out things like palmitic acid, which then can, can go into the, the, you know, into the, into the mitochondria be incompletely oxidized and then and then show up with uh, depositions and that affects insulin signaling. So it's kind of a really interesting uh, uh, concept there. But yeah, I mean, you, you, cause we have people that are on a carnivore diet that gain weight, oh, yeah. haven't lost weight yet. And they're wondering, and, and, you know, people, and they keep telling people, you know, well, just got to eat more. You just got to eat more. And I, I, I you know, I, I like that strategy for the beginning when people are coming off carbohydrates and not being addicted because you replace it. And you can change that, you know, you change it to more of a fat-based metabolism. But then there's a point where you have to reassess and say, where am I at now? And do I need to make any changes? And some people, some people don't want to do that because they know that there's people that have continued to eat and they lost weight, but a lot well, of people don't. I think a lot of people are replacing food addictions of carbohydrates with food addictions of any sort, whether it be a keto food addiction, carnivore food addiction, you know, we're we are overeating in a lot of ways, many people. So I don't know. Well, some people would blame you for some of your recipes. Uh, ah, <laughs> so that's so good. Good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it is, uh, you know, you look through that stuff and, uh, I, you know, I do think that, you know, there's, uh, 
It's an interesting study that came out a few years ago looking at cholecystokinin, which is one of our satiety hormones, and seeing that there's a differential impact on men and women and children, in fact. So men seem to respond the best to cholecystokinin, and cholecystokinin is a uh, mostly fat and a little bit of a protein-triggered uh, 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 hormone. And so maybe women have a harder time because they don't reach the satiety as well as men, because we do seem to see a lot of women, particularly women who are kind of in this perimenopausal age group that they struggle more. And, and then obviously there's some hormonal uh, yeah. hormonal things going on there that uh, make it put them at a disadvantage. And there's also this sort of uh, unnatural um, uh, sort of uh, ideal that, that people see for women. You know, they, 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 you know we've had- Well, when your ovaries are no longer spitting out estrogen and progesterone like they once would, you burn about 300 less calories a day. If you do the math, that's 10 pounds a year. So, I mean, there's, I know some people don't believe in supplements. I do, because I know how they can affect the female hormones and they, I'm not talking about like synthetic, you know, hormones or anything like that. I'm talking about all natural things, but I don't know. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. I, you know, it's not that people don't believe in supplements. I mean, you know, I guess the question, because they, they certainly exist, it's not like the, the, like Santa Claus, but I mean, it's, you know, are they efficacious or not? And, you know, I, I think the problem with supplements is there's so many amounts, so many out there that Crap, I are, are not effective and they just, you know, all they, they're effective at lightening your wallet. Um, and so, they're, you know, most of the supplement industry, I would say, was like that, but there probably are some like, you know, for instance, uh, like what is, what's one, uh, berberine, you know, that's a, that's a Chinese herb that people use for blood sugar control. Um, and that does have some science behind it that shows, you know, I've seen some data on there that it does help with uh, insulin sensitivity. It works similar to metformin in, in, in its ultimate, uh, ultimate form, but it, it helps to uh, sensitize people to insulin and might help prevent or slow down hepatic gluconeogenesis. But, but what, so when you say supplements, what are you talking about? What stuff are you I'm thinking? not talking about like uh, the ketone supplements, like keto OS and all that crap. I think that's a, it, it, you, you don't want to use body fat to make ketones, take that stuff. And that will like lighten your wallet for sure. Um, I guess I think that, um, you know, things like a GLA, that really helps with female hormones. And um Gosh, you know, like different amino acids do different certain things, whether it be like L-carnitine, L-tyrosine, you know, depends on what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve. Um, but, you know, getting a pure form of different amino acids are really helpful. Um, GLA is really helpful when it comes to skin. I mean, I don't know if you saw that testimony, probably not, but um, I posted on Instagram. Someone said, thank you for your, you know, Facebook live video I added the supplement you recommended, and I was doing carnivore level one, but my skin wasn't clearing up. I added that and you could see she looked so red and painful and then it went to nothing. And that was in five days, that's it. So I guess, I don't know, I've seen the proof is in the pudding and I'm not saying, I'm not saying take raspberry ketones or like uh, what are some of those Dr. Oz crazy ones that he talks about, you know, I'm not talking about anything like that, but um, especially for like menopause and um, when our cycles start to change as women, different things that can help with that. Do you find that, uh, you know, being carnivore has sort of uh, limited your foodie like creativity? Do you find that, do you find it it's sort of depressing that I don't have access to as many ingredients uh -huh. as I might have had or? Are you finding you're just more challenges and you're still having a lot of fun with that? Um, yeah, no, I, I'm more challenged. I'm not like that. Um, I think too many people are like that in their life. Like, oh, I can no longer have this or I can no longer have that or whatever it is. I've never been like that. When I was told that I couldn't have my own children, I didn't say, oh, I can't have my own kids and get all sad and depressed. I went and adopted kids and they're the coolest kids in the world. Like, I think people just need to be more positive in that aspect and see it as, all right, let's get the creative juices going. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'll, no, I, if you look at like the carnivore cookbook or the ebook that I did, I made a lasagna, you know, like there's nothing I can't do. I don't know. It's just more fun. And I like the food better. Really yeah, how do you make a, how do you make a lasagna using like an egg noodle or what's the, what's the, how's oh, the, lasagna? you don't know what the protein noodle lasagna is? I, I met some people, um, <laughs> There's some of the people I recognize on your uh, podcast or the Zoom meetings here. 
Yeah. Um, the protein noodle lasagna, you use very thinly sliced like deli meat, like turkey or chicken. Okay. Um, I use applegate chicken, like really thinly sliced. It's just like a noodle, it's slimy, just like a noodle. And you know, I brown the meat and all of that. And then the sauce, instead of a red sauce, I use my brown butter cheese sauce, which is even better. And so a lasagna is just, the de definition is just a layer. And right. but it looks just like a lasagna. People are Instagramming it all the time. They just love the protein noodle lasagna. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I will make it for you, Sean. I will make it for you. I'd love to try it. That's good. So you do just it's like a ground beef and then, you know, the noodles with the meats and then uh, yep. uh, can you use like Parmesan, uh, not Parmesan, uh, like mozzarella and uh, no, I was thinking of the prosciutto. Do you ever use prosciutto in there? I it? haven't used that because it's going to be um, a little bit stringy to cut. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. But I've only, yeah. you know, I usually use that. Um, I don't know, it's Applegate, thinly deli meat, whatever. Yeah, I know, like when you go to the deli, because always people, you know, you get yeah. prosciutto sliced, like, you know, microscopic thin is the way it's traditionally served. So I wonder, you yeah. could just have them cut it a little thicker. And I don't know, you know, it's, it's you know, if you have it for a different purpose. But I mean, the prosciutto does have a very, a very strong taste. And it's probably not a, because I guess uh, the, the chicken, because it tends to be maybe less strong of a taste is kind of the base. I don't like poultry. It's the only recipe I really like poultry with. Yeah, that might be. You don't really know the beef takes over, and the you know the parmesan and all those flavors kind of takes over. Yeah, I'm just loving that. That, that was it. A brown butter uh, cheese Pizza. sauce. That yeah, sounds yeah. friggin' delicious. It is really good. It is. I, have, have you been, have you ever made brown butter before? Uh, I think it, inadvertently. I mean, on accident. Cooking. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best thing ever. But you know, like I'm saying, you know, is it is the, the lasagna something I would recommend for someone to have all the time? No, you know, you got to have, you know, more protein in with that. But um, I grew up on lasagnas on my birthday. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's something that I'm not giving up. And I don't, I just make it a little different. Yeah, that might be something I do because like I said, right now I'm doing, I'm cycling these uh, sort of days of leaner, leaner meat. Yeah. Uh, and then like every fourth or fifth day, I got to load back in some, some yeah. calories. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going like, right now it's like 2,500 calories a day is my light day, which for a lot of people would seem like a lot of calories, but for me, that's not much. And then on my refeed days, I'm eating five, 6,000 calories. So, yeah. uh, so I'm still eating a lot. I'm not, you know, even though I'm getting leaner, I'm not. So that, that might be something fun to do, just make yeah. a tray of lasagna and snarf that down by myself. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, all right. Well, 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 Maria, we've been here for an hour. I just flew by. It's been wonderful talking to you. I hope to, to, to see you again in person at some point and enjoy I some. Hope that, who knows about Denmark? But that, I really hope I'm crossing my fingers. Oh yeah, yeah. The thing was, I guess it's maybe it's technically Sweden now, but yeah, I think uh, we'll see if we get to make, meet it in, meet in someday. August. Someday. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming in. Uh, we've got, I don't know if we got, we, we might have somebody else tomorrow. Maria, would you be, would you be willing to send us a recipe or two for our website that we could link to link back to you at some point so we could. Uh... Yeah, for sure. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we, 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 we've got some recipes. We've got a few chefs on the site that contribute, but we had Pete Evans said he'd send us something. So I'm trying to just, you know, maybe, maybe that, maybe that uh, protein lasagna or something like that would be, would be kind of cool or something. If we could just, uh... <laughs> I have to be careful. The ones in the books, I can't. They, they're oh, okay. Victory okay. Bell. Victory okay. Bell would, they'd go after me. Oh, Vic, yeah, I know Victory Bell. You know, they, they post my book. But uh, but if you got something you want to share, and then we'll obviously a treat, you know, give you a full oh, attribution sure. for the recipe. But uh, yeah. that would be that would be really cool. And somebody's saying they want your carnivore recipe book now. Jenna does. Oh, so hopefully, you're so hopefully. Yeah, where can, where can folks find your, your carnivore recipe book? Um, it's on Amazon. I think it's at some Barnes and Nobles where that's not owned by vegans. Um, <laughs> but you know what, Sean, if you want to do a cool, like a giveaway together, we can certainly yeah. do that. Your book and my book together. Let, you let me know. That sounds good. Let's talk about that afterwards at some point. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to shut it down. I got to do my fasted workout. I'm going to be okay. like, I got a date with a 200 pound medicine ball. I got to throw around and then some other stuff. And then I'm going to then I'm going to feast. <laughs> you guys have a great Sunday. Thanks a bunch. You guys Bye. take care. Bye-bye, everybody.